tonight, I will read to you from the Holy Bible. This is God's voice to us. Miracles of God are going to take place in your life tonight. This is your time to turn from everything in this world and to receive the power of the blood of Jesus. I believe this is your turnaround moment. And you shall be my people, and I will be your God. I heard him like the clap of thunder. He said to me, Son, build me an army. The greatest stories often begin where lesser ones would end. The story of Maura Cirillo should have ended when he was abandoned in a Jewish orphanage. Or perhaps when anger and despair drove him to the brink of suicide. But God has a way of using unlikely people to change the destiny of the world. To this troubled place, God sent a Baptist nurse named Ethel Kerr. She told Morris about Jesus, and Morris felt something real for the first time. So intense grew his need to know more about Jesus that Ethel risked everything to smuggle him a Bible, and thus his destiny changed. His new faith eventually discovered Morris was forced to leave the orphanage since he refused to renounce this Jesus he barely knew. Ethel Kerr helped him find a foster home and took him to a church service. There, on an otherwise ordinary evening, Morris committed his life to Christ. Suddenly, he found himself in the clouds, surrounded by the presence of God. Looking down, Morris noticed two large footprints through which he could see people from every continent, every race, every creed, burning, lost, and hopeless. He recognized their pain and answered yes to his calling. Morris became God's servant to preach salvation and deliverance to the nations. The next chapter of his life was one of immense joy for the young man, preaching, attending Bible school, ordination, and wooing the beautiful Teresa to become his wife. Eventually, she said yes. From then on, they served God together. Preaching the gospel of salvation, healing, and deliverance, Maura Cirillo ministered anywhere and everywhere. From the start, unexpectedly large crowds gathered. Altar calls were massive. The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, proof of the presence of God, the power of Jesus to save and to heal, and the call on Morris's life. But he was not content. It wasn't just Americans that needed Jesus. Morris was called to the world. In 1955, not knowing evangelistic crusades were illegal in Greece, Morris flew to Athens for his first international crusade. Met with the impossible, he did what has since become his standard lifelong practice. He locked himself in his hotel room and prayed until God gave the victory. Ten days later, a stranger appeared at his door. Good morning, she said. My husband is the president of the Bank of Athens. I am here to help you get the permits you need. 
From all over Greece, they came, packing an Athens theater to hear the young evangelist proclaim, I greet you today in the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Widespread worldwide acclaim followed, then preceded every appearance Morris made. In Haiti, voodoo witch doctors tried to kill him, but were countered by God's protective power. In the Far East, false gods entrapping people in Buddhism, Shintoism, Hinduism, and other shackling beliefs fell to the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. He is alive! In England, miracle healings revitalized historic churches. Thousands and now hundreds of thousands of people found freedom. But the story was about to take another turn. In 1962, after a vigorous crusade in Porto Alegre, Brazil, a weary Morris knelt in prayer. He humbly asked God to give me the ability to take what you have given to me and to give it to somebody else. God audibly replied, son, build me an army. There was no opting out. This was world evangelism on a massive scale. Those marching orders define everything. Now, Morris Cirillo would pass on God's anointing on his life to Christians on every continent. For a divine purpose, so that you will know that what you have seen, what you have heard, is not the work of a man, it is not the work of Morris Cirillo, it's the work of the Holy Spirit, and you can leave this city and go right to your own city and do the same thing. Beginning with the historic El Cortez Center, schools of ministry spread like wildfire across the world. Like their mentor, these student leaders became proof producers, the manifested sons and daughters of God, taking a new anointing of supernatural healings, signs and wonders into nations, cities and villages. Ever broadening his outreach, Morris engaged the latest technology, radio in the early years, then award-winning television specials, a global daily ministry program, the schools of ministry with the global satellite network, and now a strong internet presence. God gave his servant wisdom and strength to raise up Christian leaders on every continent, God's victorious army. And marching along side by side were faithful supporters whose generous gifts enabled this army to reach the front lines of spiritual battle. And you have been the one that have taken the step of faith. You've got a vision for the lost and for the nations of the world. And I want to thank you for that. We could never do it without you. The impact of Morris Arillo on the world is that of a spiritual giant, a gifted man of God with a heart for the lost and a global vision to reach them. From his early tent crusades to the Million Soul Crusade, the Billion Soul Crusade, and ultimately training five million Christians, Morris Arillo thinks big. His work proves that nothing is impossible when God's people work in obedience to the Holy Spirit. This includes reaching his Jewish brothers and sisters in Israel where evangelizing is forbidden. Tremendous favor with the government opened the door to send movies and books declaring the Messiah's arrival to every Jewish home. We're celebrating more than 50 years of ministry to the Jews worldwide. God is raising up Israeli nationals who are going to, like the early disciples, being able to produce the proof that Jesus is the Messiah. To those proof producers scattered across the world, Morris became known as Papa Cirillo and his wife, Teresa, as Mama. She was mother to the nations, helping Morris start global initiatives, organize crusades, and even stepping in to help orphans. Truly, she was the neck that turned the head. We affectionately call her Mama because she's mother to millions of people around the world who love her and affectionately hold on to her for spiritual life and for her prayers. 
Stand up, sweetheart. Come on. Look at the most beautiful woman in the world. She also took care of the Cirillo home while Morris traveled, often 200 days of the year, and always remained his biggest supporter. Maura Cirillo's life is a model of surrendering wholly to God. He lived what he preached. He prayed. He fasted. Twice his wife was miraculously healed. Morris himself benefited from supernatural healings. He believed God with every ounce of his strength. And the Maura Cirillo Legacy Center in San Diego promises to continue the work of training nationals and passing on the new anointing unlike any other. How many of you want to be proof producers? That's what the, the legacy is all about. Where somebody can go and sit like we had the El Cortez School and come out and change a nation because you came here and you got the anointing. Through the prophetic word and teaching of God's servant, Maura Cirillo, Thousands of minds, bodies, and spirits continue to be healed. Millions of souls are being delivered from eternal hell. And new generations are being raised up in the gospel for miracle ministry and frontline outreach until the return of our Messiah. The legacy of Maura Cirillo remains an ever kindling flame a ministry on which the sun will never set. Oh. Uh -huh.